Hey guys, this is Andrew with High Level Reviews, and today I'd like to take a look at Radiata Stories. The game was developed by Trice and published by Square Enix, and was released in North America in 2005. Trice is responsible for the Star Ocean series, Valkyrie Profiles, and helped on Final Fantasy XIII too, so needless to say they were well established by the time they were working on Radiata Stories. The game was a huge hit in Japan. However, it didn't quite enjoy the same success in North America. Though the game regrettably takes far too long to let the player explore the beautiful world and begin recruiting any of the 176 available characters in the game, Radiata Stories is a blast to play. The game starts with Jack Russell's attempt to join the Radiata Knights. If Jack's name doesn't hint at the tone of the game, then the incessant kicking of objects and people will. He gets crushed by Ridley Silverlake in a trout, but because of his lineage, is still allowed to join. He's placed in the Rose Cochon Brigade under Gans Rothschild whose father Gawain Rothschild is rumored to have killed Jack's father. After a few inconsequential developmental missions, the Brigade runs into some trouble trying to secure a trade agreement with elves. Ridley is attacked by orcs and is only saved due to the actions of a high-ranking Dark Elf, who merged her spirit with an elf that perished during the attack. Because of extreme xenophobia and racism and an extraordinarily overprotective father, the Rose Cochon Brigade is disbanded. Ridley is promoted to captain while Jack joins a group of mercenaries from Theater Van Core, and Gans, after failing the test to join Theater Van Core, settles in with a group of bandits in the Void community. Eventually, the game forces you to decide which side you'll support in the inevitable civil war. You either side with the humans or the non-humans, and this is my largest complaint, the two tales are so very dissimilar in quality that I'd only recommend the non-human path if you're a completionist or have a hard time morally siding with the humans. You just get to experience so much more substance on the human side than on the non-human. You're often just told about major events on the non-human side rather than being able to directly partake in them. Though most of the darker themes are handled in generally lighthearted ways, the writers did a superb job of carefully constructing a believable conflict. Both sides have the hateful bigots and war-hungry manipulators, but also have the torn idealist and kind-hearted souls that only want to do what is right, however nebulous that term might be. They also made Jack a very affable and profoundly dense character. Initially, I thought there was something beneath the surface or some latent skill or intelligence in Jack, but there certainly isn't. He's not bright, but he's headstrong and hilariously sarcastic. He endlessly mocks pomp and tradition. This attitude is seen quite literally in the gameplay mechanic of kicking objects to determine if they're hiding treasures, and being able to kick nearly every NPC in the game, which will typically initiate a duel and is used as a recruiting device. It's an awesome mechanic. I'm not sure why it took so long to introduce kicking as a way of exploring one's surroundings. I must also add that while most RPGs have made me smile a bit here and there, Radiata Stories actually made me audibly laugh a few times. I enjoyed the comedic situations in the game even if the primary conflict struggled to take off initially. The lack of a major villain early in the game also slowed down the pacing and I'm sure contributed to the lack of interest in some gamers. The main players and true reasons for the war, outside of the obvious ones, aren't revealed until late in the game. However, a creative day-night cycle that dictates where NPCs will be and how they will interact with the main character infused the game with a lot of life and gave character to NPCs that are all too often presented as paper-thin one-liners in the RPG genre. Every NPC has its own schedule, relationships with other NPCs, and responds differently to Jack depending on the various factors. The game certainly subscribes to the quantity over quality method in terms of characters, but that's not to say you won't become attached to several of them. Gans is a truly torn and lovable character. Ridley, despite having a bit of a forced relationship with Jack, is also a sympathetic figure by the end of the game, though she is initially stubborn and taciturn. Though I wish some characters had been given a little more time to bond with Jack before disappearing for large portions of the early game, I did truly enjoy the story. It does a lot of things differently and rarely misses once the game lets go of your hand. Combat in Radiata Stories is very similar to Triace's previous system used in the Star Ocean games. Battle takes place on a separate real-time screen, but enemies are visible and avoidable in the field if you aren't prepared for a fight. The player only controls Jack, 
which is rarely an issue because the AI's responsiveness is stellar in most scenarios, and bringing up the menu freezes the action. You can issue general commands to party members and elect specific formations through the link system. You only have one button for normal attacks, but you string combos together that you unlock as you level. You assign different attacks based on weapon choice in the menu and continue to unlock different kinds of attacks for different weapons as you use them more and more in combat. You also slowly gain vaulty points, which allow you to use a large attack, again specific to the weapon equipped, and once the vaulty points are maxed, it enables a massive attack that is, yet again, specific to the weapon equipped. Combat is simplistic and easy to learn, but will reward skill and well time blocks. Attacking after a block initiates a counter. Plenty of enemies and harder monsters can be taken on earlier if the player is adept at evading and blocking attacks. The only major improvement that could have been made would have been a more intuitive lock-on system. I often found myself running through monsters to get to an enemy off-screen when I used a lock-on function. Nothing game-breaking, but very much a nuisance in important fights. Recruiting characters plays a huge role in how your party will look and what you'll be capable of doing. There isn't a magic stat, so magic users must be upgraded as the game progresses to increase the damage which is a shame if you're fond of a particular character. Each character has one skill and can't learn any more than that. You also can't equip them with armor or weapons, and most of the times this skill is a passive skill. Jack can learn a character skill through the link system during combat, and this makes picking characters with strong skills very important as the game progresses. While I personally enjoyed the minigame of recruiting characters, I understand why some were frustrated with the lack of transparency. Some characters need only be talked to in order to initiate a recruitment quest, or kicked a few times to get a duel. Others, however, require very specific prerequisites to be met, some of which felt impossibly hard to guess without the use of a guide. Take Jarvis, for instance, a sergeant with Theodore Van Cor and a dipsomaniac that has accrued quite the bill at a local pub. In order to initiate the task necessary to recruit him, you have to approach the man working the bar with less than 5,000 doggles, which is Radiata Stories' currency. Talk to him, run to Jarvis but do not talk to him more than once, run back and offer to pay, get the money necessary for his debt, and finally pay it off. A lot of these requirements are tedious and hyper-specific, and so many characters are easily missed because of this. However, for a cast of 170 plus recruitable characters, Trice really managed to give each one a unique and different feel. And with the addition of the aforementioned day-night cycle, the player ends up being immersed in a near-living city, which, while smart and geniusly implemented, can also become a bit silly as you have to sleep to progress the clock. And this often requires a lot of manipulation to perform tasks at very precise moments. If only the minor towns you run across had been given even a fraction of the attention the hub town got, the world would have been one of the more enjoyable and charming games in the PS2's catalog. While technically cel-shaded, Rowdy Out of Stories doesn't have that distinct look most cel-shaded games do and is in fact a gorgeous game. The backdrops are often breathtaking and the minor touches, from leaves floating across the screen in forest to farmers working, really help sell the beauty of this land. The game's music was composed by Noriyuki Iwadari, who also worked on Grandia titles, and I must say that while I didn't dislike a single track, it was one of the less memorable compositions I've heard in a video game. Trice wasn't risk averse when creating this game. I have a lot of respect for games and companies that try new things or experiment with old formulas, and I genuinely enjoyed my time with Radiata Stories. That said, I think a lot of people that played this title on release didn't get how deep and addictive the recruiting aspect of it could be because it simply wasn't obvious enough for them. If there had been a system in place that alerted players to the availability of certain characters or even hinted at the more obscure tasks one had to do to unlock the stronger characters, the game would have opened up more quickly for the average player. As it is, the beginning of the game feels painfully slow-paced, even though the writing was great and many moments were hilarious. It just took so long to open up and reveal how deep the experience could be. And this includes a new game plus and a post-game dungeon. I still recommend the title because I loved the game, but if you need fast-paced immediate action with a strong central villain, this game isn't going to be for you. Instead, it rewards the patient player with an eventual large-scale conflict and some truly epic battles and genuinely poignant moments. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. This has been Andrew with High Level Reviews, and I appreciate you guys stopping by.